What's up everybody, Matt Magna here with Don Dimension Cars and today I'm looking at this 2012 Nissan Xterra Pro 4X. Now, these have a strong V6 engine, four-wheel drive and they're capable of off-roading right out the gate. They've also been pretty popular since 1999. So without any further delays, let's take it for a drive. Not so fast, cue the intro. If you want to see me review more cool cars like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that like button if you like what you see. Here we go! So, if you're looking at mid-sized SUVs and the Nissan Xterra landed on your list, well, buckle up, sit back, and relax. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to help you decide if it's for you or not. We're going to look at all the features and performance, specs, and some other less known factors. Anyways, first thing you notice sitting inside this car is that you're pretty high off the ground. You've got a commanding view of the road, and you've also got a somewhat comfortable seat. Now besides being comfortable seats, these hold up really well over time. They go many miles. They're durable and rugged just like the rest of the vehicle. And of course, they're not very refined, which is a common theme that you're gonna see during this review. They are cloth, so if you're a leather person, uh, this is not gonna be your favorite seat. There's a bit of bolstering there, not too much, and you also have manual seat controls. This car is not overflowing with refinement, but it has it where it counts. The steering wheel in front of you looks like the standard Nissan steering wheel from the early 2000s. I personally like that design because I used to have a 350Z. It looks sharp and it's got some gray plastic. There's a little bonus though. You'll notice that there's some nice red stitching and it's leather wrapped. You also get some radio and cruise controls which are nice to have. Also I'll mention that it has a nice feel at the 9 and 3, 10 and 2 notches as well. And it's the perfect size for a steering wheel. Now. The Pro 4X gauges are sharp. It's a nice feature to have, the fact that they're white gauges, and there's a nice shiny silver border, very easy to read and cool to look at. The orange screens here provide some basic information. What can I say about the rest of the dash? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty bare bones. If you like all the bells and whistles and a ton of refinement, then this won't be your favorite. If you're like me and you want it pretty simple and intuitive with just a few buttons, not too much going on, then it's ideal. Moving on to the climate controls. Honestly, there is not too many buttons and it's easy to figure out. The knobs do have a nice resistance to them though. The driver controls below are in a good spot and you can switch between rear wheel drive and four wheel drive right here, as you can see. And the radio in this particular Xterra was an aftermarket setup so I won't be able to review the stock radio on this and the heated seats was added by the owner as well so really right out the gate there isn't too many creature comforts in this particular model the shifter has a nice leather material with red stitching just like the steering wheel it's pretty soft touch and if you look closely you can see the shift pattern it does feel pretty good in your hand and it's nice to shift with it we're going to get more into that later as far as how big the throws are and how well the vehicle shifts and drives. More on that in just a few minutes. We're also working with some cup holders. They are an okay size for most beverages. You also have a little space in front of the shifter or the gear lever as they might say overseas 
to put some small things like coins or this hand sanitizer. In times like these, you'll see a lot of hand sanitizer in cars. The center console has an average amount of space with some cool little slots for small things as well. There's also a power outlet in there as you can see. And as we open the glove box, you can see that there's a good amount of space in there, enough room for a manual and just a bit more. Sometimes you're lucky if you can even fit the owner's manual in there. Don't forget, you also have a side map pocket with another cup holder of sorts. Moving on to the back seat. I've sat back there before on a couple road trips and it's not a huge selling point of this vehicle. It's definitely alright, but it doesn't have any bolstering to speak of and not too much legroom either. But it is nice to have five doors. Now let's move on to the cargo capacity. The back trunk space is very good. It's working with 36 cubic feet and the seats do fold down as you'll see in a second and when you do that it has almost 66 cubic feet. That's pretty good. If you're hauling cargo then this is a really good option and the headrests do come off so the seats can fold down flat which is very useful. It's also got nice tough materials back there which is good for campers and people hauling all sorts of cargo. And don't let me forget to tell you that these things come with a first aid kit in the back. It's a nice little cool feature. You might need that when you're out off-roading. So as you look around the interior of the Xterra one last time, you'll see that everything is mostly harder plastics. You know, it looks all right, but the whole theme of this is uh, tough and durable. You don't see fancy wood trim or a sunroof or a moonroof or massaging seats. <laughs> That's not the point of this vehicle. This thing is a little bit utilitarian, but also usable on the road as well. But we're going to get into the driving dynamics very soon, and right before we do that, we're going to talk about the exterior of the Nissan Xterra Pro 4X. Looking at the Nissan Xterra Pro 4X from the outside, you'll notice that it's on the boxier side, but it does look sharp. It's definitely tough looking, you know, macho, robust bold. Looking at the grille on the front, you can see it as a stylish upside down trapezoid and it's got blacked out mesh design and some eye catching gray elements. Overall it's pretty high off the ground, taller than most vehicles, but it's not too tall for the mid-sized segment. It's actually got about one foot of ground clearance, which will help you when you go off road. Special note that I'll talk more about later, it's one of the last newer body-on-frame SUVs that you can get. Nowadays, you'll encounter mostly crossovers and car-based SUVs. Coming around to the side, you can see the noticeable big beefy tires and the 16-inch wheels. And up towards the back, notice that there's a step up. Now this helps you access the roof rack. Up top there, one can also find a nice little storage area and I like to refer to it as the bonus storage area because I have never seen this before. So get this, imagine you're on a camping trip, you have some wet clothes or other stinky gear that you just don't want inside the cabin with you. You can put it up there, let it air out, and it'll give you more room inside to store some other stuff. You know, while we're up top, also look at these off-road lights. Now these can turn on with your high beams. They're super bright, but I filmed this during the day, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. Also make note that on the side here, it has pretty cool looking door handles. But they are just a little bit high and hard to reach for the vertically challenged. That about sums it up for the exterior of the Pro 4X. Now we're going to move on to the good part, which is how it drives. So I'm driving along, I'm driving along, and... I notice that the whole feel of the vehicle is nice and relaxed. When I'm going over bumps, I'm not really feeling them. The suspension is nice, soft, and forgiving. You can just tell while you're driving on the highways and side roads that this Xterra Pro 4X has some off-road capability. And you're sitting up nice and high. You got a really good view of the road. Speaking of the visibility, the A-pillars really aren't in your way too much. The mirrors are pretty good. And you can also see out the back alright. The blind spot uh, isn't really a problem either. You really do have a commanding view of the road. It's really nice to sit up high like this. 
Also, when driving on the highway, I notice that there's not too much road noise. It's not too loud, but it's not super quiet either. I would say it's pretty quiet. It does its job. Sound dead materials are all right. Especially since this is kind of a bare bones, non-luxury vehicle. It's doing an okay job. So I really like this steering wheel. It's got nice soft touch leather and the handling on the highway is nice and relaxed. It's not too jerky, which really is good because if you just move your arm a little bit, it's not going to send the vehicle careening into the other lane. The thing that you touch with your hands almost as much as the steering wheel while driving this is the shifter. Now that one's nice because it's got a nice soft leather as well. And when you're shifting, you'll notice that it has medium length rows and you can tell when you're in neutral, which is nice. Nice and easy to shift, very smooth, and I'm actually a pretty big fan of this shifter. The clutch biting point is around two thirds of the way up in the pedal. And starting from a stop is not necessarily hard, but it just takes a little bit of getting used to. It's a decent travel distance for the pedal. And I'd say you need about 2,000, maybe 1,500 RPM to get this thing moving from a dead stop. And as far as SUV truck transmissions go, this is not too hard. You just get used to it, and it's all going to be muscle memory. Not too bad. But yeah, if you're sitting in bumper to bumper traffic it's not going to be your favorite vehicle it's not like the Civic Si I used to own with just a really short travel and really smooth short throws buttery shifts it's not like that but it's definitely very livable and if you're on a road trip or something on the highway you're just going to be cruising in six gear so really this is not going to hold you back at all as far as driving dynamics goes uh, the Xterra Pro 4X does handle itself pretty well in the corners. I wasn't able to test it off-road, so I can't speak to that part. But driving around the city, even on back roads, it's not feeling like it's gonna tip over. Now I may have mentioned this briefly before, but this is a true body-on-frame SUV. It's not a car-based SUV or a crossover. What it does have is a fully locking rear differential four-wheel drive. So you can kind of think of vehicles like the Toyota FJ Cruiser, the Jeep Wrangler, or the Toyota 4Runner. This is kind of in the same league as those. So if those are on your list, then this thing probably could also fall on your list. you got to just compare uh, the different criteria that you need. I will not neglect to mention that this is based off the Nissan Frontier. And if you're looking at the Pro 4X, you don't necessarily have to discount the X or the S, but the Pro 4X is the top of the line Xterra. The Pro 4X is just the best. It's made to go off-road, but of course it's going to cost a little more. Depends on what you need it for. Now, one of the best parts of this vehicle is actually the engine. Now, this is a 4-liter V6 Nissan engine. It's part of their VQ family. It's got 261 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque. Now this is really good torque. Yeah, it's pretty responsive when you put your foot down on the pedal. This Xterra comes from a time where the Nissan SUVs were solidly built and the engine is very reliable and dependable too. You'll just look online, you'll see people's reviews, what people say about these, and if you maintain them right, it's gonna be a bulletproof engine that lasts you a long time. Also, I will add that the V6 has a nice growl to it. It's a, it's a good throaty V6 sound, but it's not too loud. But when you put your foot down on the pedal, you can definitely hear it. It's got a nice uh, exhaust note. All right, hang tight. We're going to do a quick acceleration. When I got my hands on that familiar looking Nissan steering wheel, I pushed my foot down on the accelerator, 
and then I pop her into second. It really makes me think back to my Nissan 350Z. It's got just a familiar sound to it. It's a familiar experience, but this has a little bit more torque. Not as fast, not as much horsepower. Bigger engine. The Nissan 350Z, 3.5 liter. This one's bored out to a 4 liter. Now, some other important things to consider if you're going to buy this vehicle. The towing capacity is 5,000 pounds. Now, to put that in perspective for you, say you have a pontoon. Those things maybe weigh maybe 2,000 pounds, 2,500 pounds, and a pontoon trailer could weigh 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Those two added together are still a bit less than 5,000. So you can imagine you'll be able to pull some normal stuff, uh, some bigger boats, but you're not going to be able to pull you know, the crazy amount of cargo. So it's definitely pretty good if you have a, like a smaller camper trailer. Don't expect to pull like one of those big camper trailers with this, because one of those without any stuff dry weight is about 5,000 pounds. So if there's a bunch of stuff in there, you know, it's not the dry weight, then you're probably not going to be able to pull a, a big camper trailer. But like a pop-up or an average size boat, jet skis, snowmobile trailer, you can manage with this pretty good. And something else you might want to know about this is the curb weight is almost 4,500 pounds, 4,417 to be exact. And it's also, you know, kind of boxy and it's not very aerodynamic. You'll see where I'm going with this in a second. So the mile per gallon estimated is 16 in the city and 20 on the highway. And some people, when I'm reading the forums, have gotten worse than that actually watching Scotty Kilmer's review the other day and he says it's square, it's up in the air, it's heavy, and it has a powerful engine. So you know that's a recipe for not a super fuel efficient vehicle. But I mean at least it doesn't have like a four hundred horsepower V eight, then it'd be getting like ten miles per gallon. With everything I've said so far, this thing is still a really great road trip vehicle. It's uh, really comfortable, the seats are nice, it's just a nice place to be. Uh, the handling is really relaxed on the highway. And it, you know the main downfall is it's just not super fuel efficient. There's going to be trade-offs with everything, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. If that's really important for you, then you'll probably want to get a uh, crossover maybe with a four-cylinder turbo, maybe a Ford Escape. But if you really prize the off-road capability of this, then maybe you're going to want uh, something like this. I mean, the FJ Cruiser is not efficient either, but they both have their torquier V6. They're high off the ground and, you know, four-wheel drive. That stuff's going to be necessary when you're attacking the off-road. Just remember, most of the time when you're driving this on the road, you're going to be in two-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive is mainly just for off-road and on the road in certain conditions up to a certain speed. For the most part, if you look online and in the owner's manual, you're not going to want to go over 50 miles per hour when you're in four-wheel drive. Anyways, if you are looking for an SUV that's capable in all seasons, it's happy off-road, it has good power, it's reliable, it's nice on road trips, and you can deal with the fact that it's thirsty for fuel, but this is a great SUV for you. That's it. Oh, and P.S. If this video helped you in your car shopping experience, consider hitting that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'm Matt Magna with Don Dimension Cars. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.